Hi everyone, welcome back to Get A Breed. So today we're going to look at kegging for home brewers. What we're going to do today is we're going to package in three different ways. So we're going to package into a mini keg and uh, naturally carbonate using secondary fermentation. We're going to package into a corny keg and force carbonate and then we're going to transfer under pressure from a Firmzilla uni tank into a corny keg. Now, corny kegs are available in multiple sizes. Stainless steel kegs are available in multiple sizes, but the mini kegs, um, mature in barrels, are always five liter. Look, let's do the mini kegs first. So, so a number of weeks ago, we brewed an imperial stout. It's the Mad Cow Stout, a 7% imperial. Um, put it into the brew monk with the fermentator controlling the temperature. Fermentation has taken place and now it's been crash cooled, so it's nice and cold, uh, which means that all the yeast will have fell to the bottom and allows us to draw wort off the top here. Now, we have got some um, silicon tubing. We're just gonna pop the product code on, on the overlay over the video for you so that you can check this out. It's just gonna pop really simply, but we're gonna pop this on here and transfer the beer into the mini keg. Don't fear the foam. Yeah, maybe a good idea to use uh, use a funnel for that. So you can see the the beer transfers really easily and quickly. This is a really quick and easy way of packaging. Um, so if you're wanting to do 25 liters of beer, you could do five mini kegs really quickly. You could see there during the filling that the foam was starting to come out. Probably wasn't the easiest to check whenever it's near the fill level. So you're gonna to have to start and stop. You don't need to worry about the foam. Uh, they talk about don't fear the foam. It's a non-rinse uh, sterilizing solution. So the fact that it's coming out a lot is actually showing you that it's getting near the top. What I've done then is I've just pushed this uh, seal on nice and tight and give it a little rinse with the hose. You can see we're the luxury of having a resin floor so we can just make a mess or tidy up our mess with the hose dead easy. What we're going to do with this now is put that somewhere warm and the same as where primary fermentation would have taken place. So we're going to package the rest of this beer and then what we'll do is we'll put the beer that needs to secondary ferment back into the fermentator and put it to 20 degrees and let it stay there for four or five days until carbonation is achieved properly. So that's uh, the five litre maturing barrels or the mini kegs and um, packaging using secondary fermentation. I've just carried out a no rinse final clean on the small, um, I think it's a six and a half litre Cornelius or Corny keg and what we're going to do is we're going to put some of the Imperial Stout in there and force carbonate this. Now when it comes to packaging in Corny kegs, again you have the option of doing it the same way as you did with a mini keg. You have the option of um, using one of the carbonating lids with a piece of the, you know, you could use hard and clear tubing or silicone tubing, attaches to the bottom of the lid and then connects to a carbonation stone. And you could trickle CO2 in over time. You can force carbonate or you can transfer under pressure. So on this particular occasion, what we're gonna do now is open this up, transfer um, the beer into it, and then we're gonna force carbonate it using CO2. It's actually easier to see the liquid filling in the corny keg as opposed to the mini keg. In beneath the gas post there's a little stem that sits down and you want to fill till it just touches the stem and no more. Obviously I'm putting the silicone tube right to the bottom and allowing it to fill from the bottom up rather than holding it at a height and spraying in with, with the intention of preventing it from getting oxidised. One final spray of that. You can see we've sprayed the top of that and give it a rinse off. You can also see the, the beer that's inside is nice and cold because it's, it's conditioning up the side of it. What we're going to do now is connect a um, ball lock disconnect and some beer line. That's going to pop on here. Uh, you can see just before we'd started that 
um, all of these joints have been PTF taped up and everything's been tightened to ensure that we've got a nice seal. It says really handily on the on the corny kegs in and out and to allow you to obviously figure out well, where you're putting the gas in. So I've turned the gas on. You can hear as I turn the gas on the lid popping. Nothing to worry about, all that's doing is it's just the CO2 that's went in, it's pushing the seal up and it's finding its settlement place. Um, I've explained previously in videos, but um, I've used the adjustable knob in the middle here to take this up to 30 PSI. So this is the manometer that's giving you the reading of the pressure that's being dispensed and this is what's left in the tank. So we have that going in there now at 30 PSI. Um, the suggestion that we would have whenever force carbonating is that you turn that on its side and just, you know, shake or roll the CO2 into the liquid. So you can turn, like we've done this in the past, we've turned this up full, full pressure and forced it in as, as quickly as we could. But I usually find that 30 seconds um, of rotating back and forth at 30 PSI will work. Whenever, whenever you're doing this, you need to, obviously you need to keep the gas on. Um, because you're wanting to, you're basically wanting to force, it's called force carbonating, so you're wanting to force the CO2 into suspension. Again, the liquid, the beer, it needs to be really cool so that it absorbs that. This isn't the ideal way of carbonating. Obviously, you want to carbonate over time, slower, but um, on occasions, you're maybe heading to a party and you want to take your latest brew with you and you've got yourself a little corny keg, so why not transfer it in, give it a force carbonate and take it with you. So I'll just... Um, close off the CO2. So knocking the CO2 off, taking off that, that will need a little bit of time now to settle. Um, and if you need to adjust the, the carbonation level inside it, obviously you've still got your PRV or pressure release valve on the top. Then you can see that you can, um, you know, pull it a little bit to, to get the carbonation level to settle. Look, to cover the benefit, the difference between um, packaging in the five liter mini keg and, and the six and a half liter corny keg. It's really simple that this is ready for dispensing right away, whereas this is going to need a week to condition and carbonate, and then it'll need some cold conditioning time. In theory, you could dispense from this right now, but it's going to be really fobby, and you need to give it a little bit of time to settle once you've done the force carbonating. So that's the secondary conditioning and fermenting in the keg, and that's force carbonating. Now what we're gonna do is do a transfer under pressure. What we're gonna cover now is transferring under pressure. Now, um, the way we do it in our brewery is that we would um, package direct from the uni tanks into the keg, so we naturally carbonate, so we watch the fermentation curve, and then as it gets six points off final gravity, close off all the valves and the, the beer carbonates itself, then we drop off the hop and the yeast trub off the bottom of it, it's ready for packaging. So if you imagine um, the way we're gonna do this is that the um, all-rounder that we have fermented under pressure that's in here, and what we're wanting to do now is pressurize the corny keg and match the pressure in the corny keg as there is here, then connect up uh, and two ball lock connectors and beer line and just pull a little bit of the pressure out of this keg, which will allow the flow of the liquid to start going into the corny keg. All, all I've done here is um, there's some sterilized beer line with two ball lock disconnects, two quick releases, and some three eight tubing. So we pop one the, um, to the beer out, and beer out's easily identified in the uni tanks because it has the silicone tube to the little float. So just to explain to you what we've done, we've popped the ball lock disconnect onto the liquid out post and we're going to want to pop this onto the ball lock connector that has the stainless steel tube and fill from the bottom up. So that's um, the out post on this occasion, so just going to pop that on. What I'm doing is I'm releasing enough pressure out of the keg to get it to start the transfer. So 
um, you balance the pressures initially and then let, let a little bit of the pressure out, what that'll do is that'll allow the liquid to start flowing into this keg and fill from the bottom up. When you start this process, you can see it's the liquid starting to flow in, it's really slow. We can quite simply pop off the, the, the two bar pressure release valve and the disconnect and pop on our CO2 and give it a bit of top pressure to speed that up. So, and see I've just popped that on. It's, it's putting CO2 in, it's just gonna force it through that little bit quicker. You can be patient and allow that to transfer slowly or you can speed the process up a little bit by putting a bit of top pressure on. It's not forced carbonating the beer, all it's doing is putting a blanket of CO2 onto the top of the liquid and pushing it through the tubing that little bit quicker. What we've done here is just allowed this to put a bit of top pressure on and then every now and again we've been pulling the, the ring pull to get um, some of the CO2 that's in it out and just to keep the, the top pressures pushing the liquid through the beer line into the keg and we're releasing pressure gradually as we fill. So the keg's now filled, so I'm just gonna pop the ball lock disconnect off. So that's transferring on the pressure, that's ready to go right away. That's force carbonating and that's keg conditioning. Three options open to you. Now we do have the stainless steel mini kegs and these work in a very similar way in that you put the beer into them. You can keg condition, you can force carbonate, you can connect up using one of these and force carbonate just by using your CO2 tank or you can use the little bulbs that screw in the side here. So we wanted to give you guys at home an overview in how to keg and the kegging options. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we're going to try and do a few more of these videos on kegging to really iron out the problems that folks are having at home. Okay, so uh, Kuhn has kindly brought me in a uh, dispensing rig up. It's just two different sizes of beer lines stepped down using a John Guest fitting. As you can see that he's put some coils in here. It's a good idea just to stop fobbing. And then it's um, the FFL fittings on the end of the ball lock connector. So you can see it says out there on that post. You just pop that on and see the beer starting to travel there through the initial part of it and bring over our CO2 tank. So we want a dispensing pressure of 10 to 12 PSI. We want to step the beer line down so that you're getting the, um, the fob knock, knocked out of it. We've run a, a glass off there, run our second glass off and we're getting a really nice um, level of carbonation on that. We're dispensing here at 12 PSI. It was a little bit over that when I very first connected, so all I did was use the pressure release valve and just pull, pull a little bit of pressure out of the top of it like that. Um, in relation to making this easy, the length of tubing is key to it and stepping it down from one larger size to one smaller size so you don't end up with fobbing issues. But look, that beer looks good, smells fantastic and tastes incredible as well. So look, cheers. Until next time, happy brewing.